Okay, so hello to Aaron and Addie Him. Zizi. Oh, Addie's on the call. Jordan and Addie. And uh, don't worry, you're just uh, missing volume by cylindrical shells. It's no big deal. It's super easy. So, um, Anyway, uh, so what we want to investigate in this scenario, you've kind of gathered a lot of ideas about volume. We've done uh, discs, we've done washers, we've rotated around the x axis. We rotate around the y-axis. We rotate around things that are not the x or y-axis. So what I want to do in this scenario is I want to rotate this around the y-axis. Okay. So this area that you see here, I'll take this area. And I'm going to take that area and I'm going to wrap it around here. Okay? Now, I don't want you to draw this next piece because this is uh, kind of what we don't do. All right? So as I wrap this around, I'm going to get, you know, that kind of that mirrored image on the other side. Agreed? Yeah. And as you picture that, can everybody see it kind of like a, almost like a bunk cake? Anybody know what a bunk cake is? Yeah. Okay. It's got, it's got that spot in the middle. Okay. And so you, you look at it, you're like, well, we're going to, we're going to slice a, a washer off. So for example, suppose that you slice it like this, you can see that over you know, here you have the inside and then you have this outside piece right here. So we'll draw this and we'll gather this in here. And no matter where we slice, we could come up with a washer like that. Everybody agree? Okay, so great. As you look at the formula for washer, it's pi times big R squared minus little r squared. So we're gonna call this function right here f of x and if you notice, this represents little r, and then this represents big R. What do you notice about little r and big R? Yeah. We're still not supposed to draw any of this? Nope. Okay. It's the same function. Does everybody see that the same function that makes up little r also makes up big R? And so if you were to go ahead and you know put that in here, you get um, you know, f of x, that quantity squared, minus f of x, that quantity squared. And you're like, well, those would just subtract and make zero, wouldn't they? It's a, it's a big problem. In fact, uh, we're kind of out of luck in terms of being able to find um, you know, the volume using washers. In fact, washers will not work. So... We, we have to go to another option. So let me get rid of all this that I've drawn. And then as Lily asked, uh, you could start drawing stuff down after this point and uh, constructing a new piece. So, oh, it's not gonna let me do it anymore, is it? So it has a limited number of times in which it will allow you to go back. So we'll just do that. Okay. So, I would like to reflect this around, but we're not going to use a washer. We're going to use a different method. This is a genius method. A bun cake. <laughs> it still does make the shape of a bun cake very good. Um, precursor, I, I'm going to do my best to show you this. Um, some of you very, may very much struggle to see it, okay? Instead of drawing a horizontal rectangle, I'm going to choose to draw a vertical rectangle. And remember when we had a horizontal rectangle and we chose to wrap that horizontal rectangle around. Everybody agree that it made that washer type shape? Well, think about what happens when we don't use a horizontal rectangle, but we use a vertical rectangle. So we're gonna take this vertical rectangle, we are going to 
wrap it around. So I would get, you know, one that would be on the other side, it would wrap around like so. Everybody see that? Okay, can you say that again, please? The lazy Susan. Lazy Susan. Okay, tell me more. People think that you're talking talking about Susie being lazy. So, like in the corner of your kitchen, like they have you like. Okay, yeah, <laughs> spins around. Very good. Okay, you make noise. Now, what if I, what if I um, draw my rectangle here? This is where it starts to kind of make sense to people, it seems, in the past. That's why I'm drawing it now. What do you notice about the purple one compared to the blue one? Smaller. Smaller. Everybody notice that it's the purple one is nested inside the blue one? In fact, I could even create, say, a, a red one right here, a very small one. Very good. Everybody familiar with those Christmas dolls that you, you take the head oh, no. off and there's another one inside? Yeah. You take another head off, there's another one inside? Those Russian nesting dolls nesting in that they sit within each other? So just like we talked about, you can have a washer on top of a washer on top of a washer, this infinite stack of washers. In this situation, you can have an infinite stack of these shells that nest within one another. Okay? So now I'm going to take that shell. Okay, so we'll, we'll take like this piece right here. And what we want to do is we want to find the volume of, of that shape. In order to find the volume of it, I'm going to take the purple one and I'm going to cut the edge of the purple one and I'm then going to unravel and stretch it out. If I cut the purple one and I unravel and stretch it out, what shape will it make? A rectangle. You see that? So I'm going to cut it and stretch it out. And it does have just a little bit of thickness to it, does it not? I mean, for example, this uh, kind of shell that I have here, we see that it has just a very, very small thickness, but there is thickness to it. And that thickness would be the same as the thickness of the original rectangle that you drew. What is the thickness of the original rectangle? It is dx. So now I need the height of the rectangle. What determines the height of the rectangle? The function, f of x. Now, talk to the person next to you. If you were to unravel this, what would you do in order to determine the length of that rectangle? Talk to the person next to you. Length of the rectangle. Go. Talk. The distance from there to there. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Somebody tell me something about this length right here. What's that? 2x times 5. Why? x is like the radius of like the circle. I mean, you multiply by 2 to get the diameter, and by pi to get like the circumference. Okay, so circumference is equal to 2 pi r. So we have 2 pi r. The question is, what do we use to determine the radius? And as you look at this spot right here, we simply chose an x value. That is an x value, it's x units away from the center. I'm actually gonna write it as two pi times x minus zero. 
because what is the distance from x to the center of rotation? It's x minus 0. But we might not always be rotating around the y-axis. Get what I'm saying? Like suppose you're rotating it around 1, then the radius would be x minus 1. It's always right minus left or top minus bottom. Okay? So you can see in this situation, I now have a formula for the volume of that shape. The volume of this shape is 2 pi times x minus 0, which is x, times the height of the function f of x, times the width of that shape, which is dx. That is the volume of that one slice. I don't want one slice. I want how many? And how do I go to an infinite number? You slap on the integral, which again is just an amazing thing to state that we simply go from one to an infinite number in that one step, which just blows our mind apart. We can't even really fathom how that works, but we did set up and show how those are related. And then we bound it from A to B. Hattie, you had a question. I'm so confused about the x minus zero thing. Um, so I have an example one and example two. I show you the difference between how you use the x's. Okay? And so we'll see that. All right. So let's go to uh, one of the most basic examples that we have. Uh, find the volume of the area bounded by y equals 2x squared minus x cubed and y equals 0 revolved around the y-axis. So this is going to model almost identical to what we, we just did. I just want you to focus on that function. If I factor out an x squared, notice I get 2 minus x. So this is a cubic. Notice that it has a double root at 0. Notice it has another solution at 2, and notice it's upside down. So this function looks something of this nature. And what we want to do is we want to bound it by the function and y equals 0. So we're going to be looking at that region right there. Okay? So I just got a brief idea of the graph in my mind. You've seen that. Again, um, the AP exam will generally always show you the graphing region that you're working with. So I'm just going to look at that port part right there. So it's identical to kind of what we drew up above. We rotate it around here. Can I make a washer? Why? Yep, because the same function is the interior radius as the exterior radius. That will not work. So we have to go to another option. Let's choose cylindrical shells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a rectangle. And I'm going to spin that rectangle, that vertical rectangle, I'm going to spin it around horizontally. I will unravel the rectangle. And now I need to determine the characteristics of this rectangle. What is the width of the rectangle? It is dx. What is the height of the rectangle? Two x squared minus x cubed. Remember that the length of the rectangle is circumference, which is two pi times the radius. I need to determine the radius. Now, <clears throat> here's where I want to try to connect with what you were saying, okay? We're rotating it around zero, right? So, and everybody, if you focus, this should help you a little bit, okay? Everybody agree I'm rotating around zero? Everybody agree that my bounds are going to be from zero to two? It's a dx problem, so I'm looking for x values. We know it goes from zero to two. We already marked that out, okay? So, give me a value between 0 and 2. 1. So if I choose to mark that rectangle at 1, what is the radius of this thing right here? 1. Suppose you chose it to be 1 half. What is the radius? 1 half. Whatever x value you chose between 0 and 2 
it also represents the distance from the center to that part of the function. It's just the choice of an x value. So therefore, our circumference is 2 pi times x. So you're going to see how nicely this works out. They actually work out easier than washers. I will often choose to use cylindrical shells instead of washers. And so I'm going to go ahead and I will multiply all this. I have 2 pi times x times 2x squared minus x cubed dx. That is the volume of 1. I want to go to an infinite number. I slap on the integral. I go from 0 to 2. Now evaluate the integral. What is the first thing we need to do in order to evaluate that integral? <coughs> yep, distribute that x. So we have 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x cubed minus x to the fourth dx. I'll keep the 2 pi on the outside, and I will now find the antiderivative which used to be this mystery thing and difficult, and now we say it's super easy. The antiderivative of 2x cubed is? x to the fourth over 2 minus x to the fifth over 5. Notice if you plug in 0, you do get 0. So we plug in a value of 2. 2 to the fourth is? 16. 16 divided by 2? 8. So we get 8 minus 32 over 5. I will convert that to fifths. I have 2 pi times, that is 40 over 5 minus 32 over 5. And I get 2 pi times 8 fifths, otherwise known as 16 pi over 5. And that is the exact volume of that shape. So you see, one of the advantages is that you just end up distributing the x. You don't have to actually foil out something that's being squared. It's kind of a nice option, right? So we like that. Uh, please flip it over. We're going to uh, try to do this one, and then we'll do this last one tomorrow. Uh, find the volume of the area bounded by x minus x squared and y equals 0 revolved around x equals 2. I want you to see if you could just draw it. See if you could draw the shape. Draw the region, try to see what's happening in a spatial understanding. Thirty seconds here or so. They're coming to my classroom. We have juniors. I thought you were coming to get a different ACT packet or something. You have them? Um, they're in the copier right now. I just need to print them off. You didn't need anything from me? No. All right. Okay. Have a good day. All right. Um, did you draw this shape right here? That is x minus x squared, is it not? You factor out an x and you get 1 minus x. So it goes through 0 and 1. It's an upside-down parabola. It's being rotated around what? x equals 2. So when you rotate it around, how much space is between the parabola and the line of rotation? One unit. So create another space of one unit as you rotate it around over there. I go ahead and I draw my vertical rectangle. I wrap that around over here. 
That was really bad, Kevin. You should start again. You're a disappointment. I knew you were thinking it, Hannah. I just thought I'd say it instead of you. <laughs> Do we okay with that? I unravel it. It's like I draw a longer rectangle because this one looks like it's going to be longer, when in reality it really doesn't matter how you draw it, so long as you draw a rectangle. It's things you do in math to try to have fun. Um, what is the width? Is this dx or dy? This is dx, your first rectangle that you drew is in fact a dx width. What is the height of the rectangle? x minus x squared. Then we have 2 pi times r. So the last critical piece for today to think about is how we determine this radius. Um, you would be very wise to really focus on what I'm saying right now, okay? So this is zero, this is one, this is two, agreed? So I would encourage you when you encounter these type of problems, don't just try to think of what do I do now, but rather think through the situation, okay? Taylor, I would like you to pick a value between zero and one. 0.5. So therefore, the radius is the distance from 0.5 over to 2. What is that distance? That radius is 1.5. Everybody agreed? Aiden, give me another value between 0 and 1. 0.25. So he picked right here at 0.25. What is the distance from 0.25 to 2? 1.75. How is it that we're coming up with those values? We're taking 2 minus that. Agreed? See, the distance, when we calculate distance, we do the right minus the left. So if you're selecting an x value, the radius will be 2 minus x. So your radius here, 2 pi times 2 minus x. That's my radius. So sometimes people are like, well, just put an x in front. That's not your radius. And that's your radius. No, not in this situation, right? You have to think critically about what's happening. So I put all these together. I have my 2 pi. I have 2 minus x. I have x minus x squared. I have dx. That is one of those rectangles. I'd like to do an infinite number. What are my bounds? Is it 0 to 1, or is it 3 to 4, or is it both? It is always the original spot in which you drew your area. Always. Okay? Always. Okay? So I have that. Let's work that out. I have 2 pi times the integral, 0 to 1, and I must FOIL that out. 2 times x, I have a 2x. Um, negative x times x is a negative x squared. 2 times negative x squared is a negative 2x squared. Negative x times negative x squared is a positive x cubed dx. I'll combine some like terms. 2 pi integral from 0 to 1. I have a positive x cubed. I have a negative 3x squared. And I have a positive 2x dx. We go ahead and work this out. I have my 2 pi. The antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over 4. What is the antiderivative of negative 3x cubed? 
or negative 3x squared, excuse me. x cubed and the antiderivative of 2x. x squared. Five times. Notice if we plug in zero, we get zero. You plug in the one, you have a fourth. You have a minus one, and you have a plus one. What happens to the ones? They disappear. You have two pi over four, which is the same as pi over two, which obviously converts to 90 degrees. I, I wait for that the whole unit to get to that spot so I could say that and then have you guys ask that question of do we have to convert our answer to degrees and uh, we are definitely not uh, pi over 2 does not represent an angle measure uh, so we don't need to do that but I do think it's fun to bring it back you guys are so ingrained in it that it's like well hey where does it stop so. Good times. Okay. So uh, tomorrow we will do one example on this, and then you'll get the rest of the time to work. I'll also produce for your study guide. Okay. You can work on that. Um, well, you will not have an assignment on Thursday, but we are going to talk about a couple type of problems that you would see on the AP exam. You have all day Friday and Monday to work on your homework as well as your study guide. It is a little bit more of a lengthy study guide. Okay. And we'll talk about the format of the test. Make sure you're ready to go. Uh, once you get through this test, the next test generally goes pretty well for people. Okay.